I, I understood what made good talk radio just because I was a I was a fan, and and uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of the hosts of talk radio are people who just sort of drifted into it. The most difficult aspects is you've all, you've always got to be sort of up. It can't be down. If if you sound depressed, even if you are depressed, it's going to go out to the listener. And, and again, as a, as a talk show listener, I don't want to listen to somebody who's depressed. There's an old Hollywood saying, self-pity is not good box office. I mean, my job basically is to entertain people on the way home. But part of the entertainment is information. But it's got to be entertaining information. It can't, you, you're, not, you're not here to conduct a civics he lesson. He is the hardest working guy I've ever seen in my life. I used to think communists just, just, just sit down and toss it out. There, he's an investigative journalist who writes a column, basically, is what it is. He researches everything. What Rush calls the stack of stuff. I have the stories in front of me, either clipped from the papers or uh, printed up from the internet. Then uh, one of the tools of my trade is the highlighter, so I can just uh, I can just underline the important parts of the story. The, the beauty of radio is that you can turn around on a dime. It's not like TV where you gotta, you know, go send out a camera crew and get it, make sure you got a live shot up, or newspapers, you know, where uh, everything has to be printed. It, with radio, it's just like that. It used to be when I started out 20 plus years ago. All I would have to do would be to say, gee, did you see the story about Nikki Pockets being indicted today in the paper? And at that point, every every phone line would start ringing. Everybody had seen the story, whether it was in the Herald or the Globe. Everybody would have seen it. Now now you can't assume anything because the audience is totally fragmented. You know, just true. Like Probably, I would say, about 40 to 50 newspapers online during the day. I pull things that I find are interesting. He pulls things that he finds that he finds interesting, and we pool our resources when we get to work. He has perfect recall of every conversation he's had with every politician his entire life, which is really distressing. Hysterically funny, very hardworking, and normally a really big pain in my ass for most part of the day. Yes, I can't wear it for a while, but uh, I'm saving it because I'll be using it someday. Lovey! Oh, I'm going out on my boat now. I used to call it the Scaramouche. Now it's the Atlantic Bay. I should be the Secretary of State, you know. Andy just rolled in here. Andy came into one of my listeners. Some free graft for a listener. Home Uma phone service. Turkey fryer. Got this from Marconi Oil. It's been, someone will come up with a good line during the uh, show. I'll have written my column because we have earlier deadlines now. Uh, do you mind if I steal that? And I don't care if they say yes or no because I'm stealing it. So as soon as we go to a break, I get on the line and I say, I want to put this line into the into the paper. I'm, I've, I've been pretty upfront about that because I don't want to be accused of being Mike Barnacle. My future? Well, I mean, I want to get over to an FM station, you know, the sooner the better. Until then, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just, I'm doing good time as, a, as the cons would say. You know, I got a, I got a bit to do here thanks to a... Thanks to the corrupt judicial system in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I don't care. I they, I don't I don't uh, care what they say about me. It's 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 no big deal. You know you can't you can't let the criticism get to you. James Michael Curley said that never complain, never explain.